Hey guys, wanted to go ahead and do a video on frequency responses and to go from there. Um, and this is funny because this whole uh, discussion happens on a discourse, so or Discord. All right, so I want to show you guys something with different microphones, and then I want you guys to tell me something, okay? So this is the Rode NT1's graph. Then this is the U87's graph. This is the OC18's graph. This is this is from their official site. This is the TLM103's graphs. This is the Caddy 100's graphs. This is the SE4100. And this is the KSM32. And the whole point of this uh, video, I know it's a catchy title, and I'm basically saying like frequency graphs are kind of bullshit, because they are kind of are, but I'll kind of um, tell you something that's important. So, but be before we go on further, let's just hear it from a person himself. And I think people know this person. Let's go ahead and play this really quick. From there is the mid-range. Mid-range is 300 hertz to 2,400 hertz. So three. So he's saying it's from 300 to 2,400 hertz, right? And so basically when you re look at a frequency response, that's what you should be looking at. So my question is this, right? So this is the NT1. This is the U87. This is the OC18. This is the TLM103. This is the CAD E100S. This is the SE4100, the KSM32, this is the Sure. oh, let's see, this is the MKH416. My point is this, I'm trying to make two points across. There are definitely clear differences in the mids between each of these microphones, and it's much more pronounced than what is shown in these frequency responses, because this doesn't tell you anything. When you look at this and all you look at all these microphones, you think, oh, well, they're all the same, they all have the same mids, they're flat line, it's, but it's not. It, it, it absolutely isn't but you won't be able to tell that looking purely on the graphs. So what I want to say is two things. Uh, I'm going to make a really silly analogy, but just hear me out. Frequency responses, they're like, they don't tell you the whole picture about the microphone. You don't know until you actually have it in person. And in many ways, frequency responses, they're like dating profiles, you know, like this. <laughs> so it shows you a picture of who that person is. But you have no idea who they are unless you're there in person is just the easiest way I can say it. These are basically they they do not sound the same. These mids are not the same between each of these microphones, but clearly the graphs say otherwise. Right. But there's another important thing, too. And kind of like, again, with the joke of the dating profile, people lie on their dating profiles. You know, people lie. This is a lie. This is the ass and the element. They say it sounds like this. Does it sound like this? No, it doesn't. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds basically the bass is all the way the fuck up here. The the highs are way down here. Like it is this is a terrible sounding microphone. The Aston Element, right? The Stellar X2 original. This is a lie. You know, it makes it sound like, oh, it sounds like this, and then there are claims that this sounds like a U87. Bullshit. Okay, this sounds nothing like a freaking U87. You're back on the Stellar X2 to cleanse your palate and let you hear what this sounds like. And now I'm officially bankrupt because it is super expensive. And now I am speaking into the Neumann U87 AI. You know, and this is up for debate, but the NT1 is a flat line like this. Is it? I don't know. I don't really believe it. But the point I'm trying to say is if all of these have a straight line right in the middle, exactly identically on all of these microphones, how is it that all of their mids sound so different? And that's precisely the point I'm trying to say is don't trust frequency graphs because some of them are lying to you and some of them, nearly all of them, don't tell you the whole picture until you actually hear it in person. So that's all I got to say. 